Hello everybody and welcome back to yet another nuclear craft overhaul spotlight video. Today we're going to be looking at MSRs. Now you can already see that um, some parts that look uh, interesting and MSR-ish have already been built. That is because I just recorded like 20 minutes of footage and once again I wasn't even recording. So I've sort of partially disassembled what I just built. Um, which is unfortunate, but you know, that's what happens. Um, yes, today we're going to be looking at MSRs. Um, I've turned this turbine off uh, because it was just making a bit of noise, um, and uh, so I didn't want that to happen while I was building this thing so close. Now, MSRs have very similar rules. I, I don't know if you remember in pre-overhaul, but the rules of MSRs were quite similar to the solid fuel reactors, but the main difference with MSRs that a lot of people didn't like, I know a lot of people didn't like, because not many people really built MSRs, is that they were just way too difficult. They were too difficult to build. It was very difficult to build complex design just because of the way that you had to get fluid around inside them. The heat exchanges were also very complicated. There was just a lot of maths involved. I was sitting there with a Mathematica script, if you remember, trying to you know, show you how the maths worked. My idea with the overhaul, this is part of the reason why I built the overhaul in the first place, is to make that sort of maths a lot easier for people. So they don't have to worry about all that stuff. And also to make the logistics of getting fluids in and out of the multi-blocks much, much easier as well. And that's why I added these ports. Um, so the cell ports we have looked at already. There's also vessel ports, which is used for the molten salt, uh, molten salt fuel here. Uh, for this design, I'm going to be using LU-235 uh, fluoride fly uh, solution. And I am using uh, five types of NAC coolant. And each type of coolant has its own port and its own type of coolant heater. Just to add a little bit more color and just to make the logistics so much easier. Um, you don't have to filter these uh, heater ports. They're all just automatically sort of automatically filtered by uh, by type so you don't have to worry about that um, so yes this is uh, the the mechanics of msrs are very similar as i say to uh, the, uh, the solid fuel reactors but there are two main differences uh, that i will talk about in this video the first one is uh, of course that um, the coolant in this case is active instead of having passive heat sinks uh, which just take the heat from the cells to the casing to then be taken away by water into steam. Uh, in this case, what you have is you have um, NAC coolant being put into coolant heaters inside uh, reactor clusters and is then extracted when, when heated up. And then that is, in principle, put through a heat exchanger to be turned uh, to, to make steam and then looped back around to the reactor again. Now, heat exchangers have not been implemented in the overhaul. They're going to be, again, a lot simpler than they were and a lot easier to use than they were in pre-overhaul, underhaul. Uh, whatever you want to call it, and uh, for that reason, at the moment, you shouldn't build MSRs in survival mode because they won't be useful, but when heat exchanges are in, you then should be able to use them to, to make steam. Um, so this uh, tutorial is going to be focused specifically on building MSRs and uh, what goes on inside them. And the second thing is, I've just realized actually three things, the second thing is that there's a new rule for MSRs about how moderator lines work. Now you'll know that in a normal solid fuel reactor, moderator lines are just uh, things like this, where you have um, a cell, a moderator, and then a reflector or another cell. So moderator lines are just uh, filled with moderators, heavy water, graphite, beryllium. Um, there's another example. I'm trying to find a better example that you can actually see. There's, there's none in my designs. Oh, here we go. Here's another one. So um, you can see cell, then some beryllium, which are moderators, and then a cell. This is a complete moderator line. In, in molten salt reactors, you can actually put heat sinks, not heat sinks, you can put coolant heaters into moderator lines. They can form part of moderator lines. Um, so for example, what you could have is you can have something like a vessel and then some moderators here. And then at some random point, you could just have one of your uh, coolant heaters in the, middle of the, in the middle of the line and then have another vessel on the end of it like, um, like this, for example. And this would be a valid moderator line. There you go, that is a line there um, that involves two beryllium and a prismarine. Now the prismarine and any type of coolant heater, the coolant heaters contribute a zero efficiency multiplier, so it will make your moderator lines worse, um, and it will uh, have uh, no contribution on the amount of flux being generated. So this line will still be 44 from the two beryllium. Um, this coolant heater will have no effect. Uh, so you've got to be a bit careful uh, if you have a moderator line just consisting entirely of, uh, of, cool of coolant heaters like this, uh, this is actually a valid moderator line with zero efficiency, right? Because all of these have zero efficiency, so the average is zero. So the, uh, the heat multiplier of these coolant heaters will, uh, the, the heat multiplier of these vessels will go up, but it will have no effect on the um, steam output. So if you, you have to be a little bit careful in desi when designing things, uh, if you have at most four uh, coolant heaters, remember moderator lines can only be up to four long. So if you have five in a row like this, 
um, with a cell on the end. Uh, this won't contribute any heat, so this is fine. But if you have something that's full or, or lower, then this will be a, a valid moderate alliance, so it will incre increase the uh, heat multiplier, but it will contribute zero efficiency and therefore zero extra um, production of hot knack and therefore zero produ extra production of power in, at the end of the day. So you've got to be very, very careful when building NSRs you don't actually do that, but also it could make for some interesting designs. Um, for example, uh, what you could do, uh, just like with the shield, so remember the, uh, one of the things about shields that you can do is it allows otherwise trapped cells to distribute their heat to clusters to be able to be dissipated. Well, now you can do exactly the same thing with, um, with coolant heaters. So I can have something like a, like a standard fission coolant heater in there, and this is now still a, a, a valid moderator line, but now the heat from this vessel can get into a cluster. Um, why would you use a heater over a shield? Um, because if you think about it, a shield has an efficiency multiplier of 50%. Well, the reason is that although this has a multiplier of zero, you can see that the uh, shield itself generates heat, and of course a, uh, a, a heater in the right place will remove heat. So um, it's a, it's a trade-off, right? So in some cases the heater might be more useful in these uh, bizarre situations where you need to get uh, a heat out of a vessel. Um, than a shield is. It's, it's a trade-off and you'll, you'll find different, a lot of different uh, scenarios where each one is better. Um, and of course another great thing is it, it's an, a fantastic opportunity for redstone coolers because for example if we have, oops that's the wrong thing, uh, if we have a cell two away with a beryllium block here, uh, a redstone um, a redstone coolant heater in this position, if we get a coolant heater, a redstone coolant heater, remember, is the rules are exactly the same as the heat sinks. This needs to be next to at least a, fi a functional vessel and an active moderator. Well, this redstone heater is fantastic because it's next to that cell and next to this active moderator because this moderator is next to a vessel, so it's active. So redstone coolant heaters could find a really nice place inside of these lines. So um, that is uh, something to, uh, to look at if you're interested in finding some, some strange complex MSR designs. Well, in this design, I'm not going to be doing that. I'm actually going to be uh, putting all of my uh, vessels in the corners. Uh, now, I actually, in the original video that I recorded before I, when I, real, before I realized I hadn't got any footage, um, I was just trying to work it out as I went along, and I sort of forgot to keep track of what I was building. Um, but hopefully we can rediscover what I was doing. Um, if I remember correctly, I had coolant heaters in these corners. Um, and uh, my sources, uh, well I have one source down there, I have another source in this corner I think, that's a source here, and then if these two are being activated and sending uh, flux to here and here, then I probably also want a source here and there. So that will get, so that will get neutrons to uh, all the uh, sort of cells on the diagonals, which will then cause the chain reaction to start when the, uh, the sources uh, give, mod give neutrons to the ones on the other diagonals. Okay, so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my, my standard heaters as part of the moderator line just to show this off. So I think standard went here and here like this. I'm going to get another cell quickly. Okay, so in total let's try and work out how much, uh, how much um, heat we're going to need to get rid of once we finish these lines actually. Um, I believe I had heavy water here like this and then I think it was a heavy water on well, actually, I think it's more effective if we have heavy water on, uh, on, on these lines like this. And then finally a graphite. I think the graphite will, uh, will finish it off. Graphite. Let's see, is that right? Let's do some maths. Now, I can look at the recipes here to find out how much criticality factor LU-235 has. 102. So how much is each one of these getting? It's getting, let's, let's focus on this cell, for example. It's getting uh, 36, 46, and then multiply by two from this line. So that's 92 uh, plus, uh, oh, actually, no, I can put a graphite here. I think graphite is probably a better option. So if you think about it, I've got 46 from here, 46 from here, that's 92, and then plus 10 again from the graphite, that's 102. So that's actually perfect. Um, that is actually a perfect criticality factor um, flux. Okay, so that is uh, the, my uh, my cell structure. Now I've got a heat multiplier of three for each of these um, each of these cells times by eight. So the base heat of this uh, base heat of this fuel is ninety six. Ninety six times by eight is seven hundred and seventy eight, and then seven hundred and seventy eight multiplied by three because the heat multiplier for each of them is three is uh, eight hundred times three which is 2,400 minus 
uh, 32 times 3, which is 96. So 2,400 minus 96 is 2,304. So we need to dissipate 2,304 heat. Now, if we focus on one corner, because of this four-way symmetry, um, and I think I'm, I, this, this design has four clusters, I remember now. Uh, four clusters, that means that if we just focus on one corner, then we can just divide that by four. And uh, so we just need, uh, how much is that? So 2,300 divided by, 2,304 divided by four is, uh, what's that, 500 and 576? I think it's 576. So as long as we dissipate 576 in each corner, then we should be fine. So this is already 110. All of the coolant rates are the same as their passive counterpart. So standard is the passive counterpart of water, by the way, uh, because mixing that with water doesn't make much sense. So that's 110 already. Um, let's flip to this 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 uh, this bar. Um, Prismary next to two standards. So that is uh, bringing us up to 115 plus 110. So that's 225. Uh, 225, yes, 225. Uh, then uh, this is actually a place for an enderium because it's next to three moderators, three active moderators. And that brings us up to 155 plus two, uh, 225, so that's 230, 380. And what do we need again? 576, so 380. Uh, and then we need, so 380, so that's only about 200 more. So if you think about it, two iron will need about 100 more. So two iron means about 100 more, and a gold is 110. So that will make us heat negative and connect up all of those uh, coolant heaters. If you think about it, these coolant heaters at the moment are not actually part of the cluster that is connected to the cells. So this gold is actually quite crucial to getting those enderium and prismarine uh, going. And that is our design. Uh, that is it. So I'm now going to just uh, finish this off with, oops, I just, there we go. Uh, need to finish this off with some casing and some glass. And that will be our design. Now, as I said before, all of the uh, coolant heaters will connect it to their respective heater ports automatically. There's no filtering involved. And because I'm only using one fuel type, I don't need to filter the ports. Okay, so that is good. And now I'm going to put my molten salt controller. Now, you'll notice that I'm using exactly the same fission reactor casing, the same glass, um, same sources as I did for the solid fuel reactors. So there's no difference between molten salt casing and solid fuel casing. They all use exactly the same casing. Um, if you're making an add-on for a fission reactor, if you're making a fission reactor add-on, which adds a new type of logic, um, again, you can have it use exactly the same casing. Um, that's part of the sort of logic multi-block system that I've been implementing over the last however many months. Um, means you can have uh, shared blocks as part of your multi-block structure. Uh, the heat exchange and the, and the condenser will be also using the same, um, same types of shell and glass. Uh, and also you can put irradiators in molten salt reactors as you did for the solid fuel reactors. Again, the rules about irradiators are exactly the same. You can put shields in. So a lot of the crossover, um, the only thing that's different is the rule about the uh, moderator lines and the fact you're using molten salt and active cooling rather than the passive heat sinks and solid fuel. Okay, so that's good. And that's our uh, multi block finished. Okay, so let's just get levers on all of these sources and this should turn on and be heat negative. Oops, source goes here, and source is on the top, and when we turn this source on, it should turn on. There we go. And our molten salt reactor is turned on, minus 56 heat per tick, so that's, um, uh, what's that, 14 for, minus 14 for each of those clusters. Um, and you can see here, the number of clusters is 4, small sparsity penalty, but almost nothing. And uh, the, uh, the heating speed, which is the uh, molten salt version of efficiency, is 470%, which is very very good so there should be a lot of uh, there should be a lot of molten salt being produced um, so for example if we just turned off this uh, well actually let's not turn that off um, we should just be able to well it's difficult to tell let's let's just get ourselves a tank maybe uh, tank and just find out how much is being produced iridium tank this will give us a good idea and I'll get a bin ready iridium tank should give us an idea of just how much is being produced um, that's how quickly uh, hot eutectic NAC alloy is being produced. Um, how much is that? One, two, three. So nearly a thousand per second, a thousand millibuckets per second. That's not too bad. Um, in the case of prismarine, we've only got um, four prismarine, while we've got, I think, eight of the standard. So this should be producing about half as much. So one, two, yeah, it's about half. Um, and then, you know, respectively, um, the same sort of proportions of the other ones. So all of these uh, ports are connected to all of these heat sinks 
and the heat sinks are then sending back their hot coolant to be outputted, ideally to a heat exchanger. In this, t in this case, I'm just binning it because I've got nothing to do with it. Um, so there you go, that is a molten salt reactor. Hopefully you can see how much simpler that is than the old ones where we had all of these settings for the s vessels and having all this coolant spread and everything. This is way easier. You can still build complex designs with intricate I uh, interiors in the same way you could for the solid fuel reactor, but it's all all of the, uh, the, the coolant, all of the coolant and all of the fuel is done via ports. And that way you don't have to mess around with pipes inside the reactor. Some people might say that that's uh, not as uh, complex as the old molten salts, and I would agree, but I think a lot more people will actually be using these. It's a lot more accessible than the old ones. Um, so there's still a bit, of, obviously a lot of complexity involved in the building of the reactors. There's gonna be a lot of complexity in setting up your um, heat exchangers, but nowhere near as much like tedious complexity, so to speak. Um, not so much tedium in like just setting up all of the different s configurations of the sides and so on and so forth. Um, but you can still make complex designs. And I think that's important. Oh my goodness, I nearly forgot to, to talk about something really important about MSRs. I, I, I just finished the video and I just realized when I was going through it that I forgot to talk about uh, the uh, rules for heat positive reactors inside MSRs because they're a little bit different to solid fuel reactors. Now in solid fuel reactors, um, heat positive basically just means that your heat sinks cannot extract the heat quickly enough to the casing. And what will ha happen eventually is that your clusters will overheat and melt, uh, or at least the cells inside them will melt. In the case of MSRs, uh, all of the uh, extra heat that can't be picked up by the uh, coolant heaters will get pushed into the casing. Now, unlike uh, solid fuel reactors, you cannot use water or something um, to uh, generate steam from uh, heat inside the casing. For an MSR, uh, you, uh, the only way you can get rid of that heat is by using something called emergency coolant. Um, so emergency coolant, uh, the recipe for this stuff is um, you uh, get some slurry ice which is uh, basically a mix of ethanol and crushed ice, which itself comes from supercooling water. Uh, and you uh, mix that together with cryothium and get yourself emergency coolant. And then emergency coolant will be heated into heat emergency coolant when it extracts heat from the casing. And uh, then this can be uh, supercooled again back into normal emergency coolant. So you can ju then just loop it around as you usually would. Um, so this stuff is not going to be useful for in a heat exchanger or something. This is purely for heat positive designs to remove extra heat. And uh, so for that reason, it, you can't use it for heat generation. It's purely for if you want to build a re uh, reactors that have a sort of heat positive nature to them. So in order to turn this design into a heat positive one, I'm going to just turn one corner of it into a, well, actually I could probably do it with all the corners. So I'll just remove these heat sinks. Um, why not? Uh, well, actually, maybe what I'll do is um, I'll remove. Uh, what I'll do is actually I'll um, I'll get some I'll get some lead ones instead. So I'll get a lead heat sink and a lead port, um, and uh, I'll use a lead sink instead of a gold one. And I'll use uh, I'll use an iron some iron sinks I did before. Actually, that was probably that's probably a little bit too rash there. So this way, um, remember, lead is quite a lot worse than gold. So that should put us over the, um, the heat positive threshold. So uh, this should now be a heat positive reactor. Uh, now we need a way of turning it on and off. Let's be official about it rather than uh, like beta about it and not to use the beta features of just being able to break part of it. Um, let's actually uh, do this properly. So what I'll do is, uh, well, let's think about this. Um, what I could do is I can put a shield here. So I can put shields in these parts of the structures like this. I just realized as well that I put um, too many heavy water there. Uh, never mind. Um, shields go in here like this. Shield, 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 shield. But because I've taken out a moderator that was important, I need to replace uh, this one with beryllium. Beryllium. Oops. So let's uh, go in there, replace that with a shield. Uh, shield. Beryllium. Okay, so they've all got beryllium and shields. Think that's good to go. Think that should now be in a decent uh, situation. And uh, I also, of course, need to put down a shield manager to turn on and off my shields. Remember from the last video, shield manager should connect to all the shields. So there should be eight shields if I've done this right. There we go, eight shields. And uh, let's get a lever to turn that on and off. Okay, so now uh, when I run the reactor, oops, is that getting enough? Uh, is that working? I actually, I think maybe actually, if you think about it, uh, I haven't got enough uh, flux coming through, right? Because uh, 
there's actually two of these new lines coming into each uh, coming into each cell. So actually, these brilliant need to be heavy water because I've lost twenty but only added ten. Um, so I need to make these heavy water, and then that should work. So now this should be getting a total of 108 flux from uh, three heavy water, and then that should uh, beat the criticality. Okay, so that should turn on. Yes, it does. And you can see now that all of this excess heat is going into the casing. The temperature is rising, and the heat is going into the casing like this. If I want to turn off the reactor, I can just do so with my shields. And uh, now the heat is actually slowly dissipating. There's a little bit of dissipation based on temperature, but it's not much. It goes down very, very slowly. That's definitely what, not what you want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some vents. Get a vent like this, like that. And I'm going to flick one of these to output mode into a bin. Oh, I need to get some uh, super laminas. Into a bin, which is there and my emergency coolant, which I'm just going to use a creative source for, like this. My crescent hammer to flip it into output mode. And you can see there that already it's working and the, uh, the heat is being transferred into that heat emergency coolant. Um, I wasn't in the GUI there to show that, um, but uh, oh yes, I should also mention that while the uh, reactor is running, you can see that the emergency coolant will not uh, be applied. So the emergency coolant is only um, put into the casing when the reactor is off. And that way, uh, you can't just cheese the whole system by just leaving the emergency coolant there the whole time. You have to flick it on and off and wait for the emergency coolant to do its job. So here we go, you can see the, uh, the casing heat is going up. I turn on my shields to stop the reaction. The heat is going down into the, uh, the, uh, the emergency coolant and the cluster heat is back down to zero. There we go. And I can turn it back on again. So you can have this on a loop. Um, at the moment, there is no redstone port to read heat levels. So um, at the moment, the best you can do is, a, is a, like a custom redstone loop. In the future, there will be redstone ports that can read and also uh, open computer support to read the temperature or the, uh, the heat level. And then you'll be able to have this on a loop. But as you can see, this is much simpler than it was for solid fuel reactors. Um, with solid fuel reactors, you have to be really, really careful about building heat positive designs um, because the only way you can do that is by uh, having uh, shields in there which block certain moderator lines. Uh, but you have to do so such that the not too many of the cells get uh, turned off because otherwise then the heat sinks themselves won't be functional and be able to remove the heat. So it's very difficult to build heat positive designs in a solid fuel reactor. Here it's quite a lot easier. So um, I can just continue to flick this on and off, run it for a bit when it gets too hot, turn the shield back on again, let the emergency coolant do its job. So as I said, emergency coolant does not generate, uh, cannot be used for any uh, power generation or any uh, heat exchanging, it's only for removing excess heat. Um, the only power generation comes from the use of the uh, heated NAC. So there we go, that is uh, an extra bit of video that I nearly forgot to do on emergency coolant. So that really is uh, what there is to MSRs at the moment. Uh, MSRs, as I say, they work and you can build designs out of them. Just right now you can't use the coolant for anything. Uh, so at some point in the future when heat exchanges are implemented, uh, I will of course make a video for them. But uh, as it stands, that is now, I think, everything up to this point in version 2.0, uh, 2.0.24. This is everything there is to do with the reactors and turbines that is in the game currently. That is the overhaul as it stands. Um, the next few videos I'm going to be doing are a slightly different uh, thing in Nuclear Craft that some of you may have seen a Reddit post about or in the Discord server me go on about probably for way too long, and that's quantum computers. Uh, quantum computers, these are actually like generally serious um, quantum computer simulators in Nuclear Craft. Has nothing to do with anything else to do with the overhaul. These are purely for if you're interested in quantum computers, like realistically, real quantum computers, interested in how they work, interested in actually making your own algorithms and so on. Um, and I'll make a load of videos on these. I'll start right from the basics of the quantum mechanics that you need to understand how these work. And then we'll build up to something like Shaw's algorithm, which is the, uh, the so-called algorithm that will break encryption, um, which I think was a minute physics video, which is really good. And I'll link to stuff like that. And, We'll, we'll have a really serious bunch of videos on them for those for those interested in it. But for now, as I say, this is everything to do with reactors. I think uh, just for fun, I'll turn this uh, turbine on and we can watch it spin um, from the uh, reactor over there. Um, again, I, uh, I, th I don't know if I mentioned this or whether I mentioned it when I wasn't recording. Um, I'm not going to upload the design for this because, as I say, uh, the, uh, the planner does not yet um, 
have the uh, heaters within mod moderator line rule, um, so I don't think there's much sense in me sending you a design uh, for this MSR, but it's pretty simple. I mean, you know, if you really want this design, it's not the best in the world. It's not that complicated. Um, so yes, you can copy it if you want, but it's I don't I won't have a design for it. Um, so there we go. Thank you all very much for watching. And as I say, I'll see you in those quantum computer videos. Uh, and I will see you, if you're not interested in that, uh, with a new uh, heat exchanger or some new reactor, uh, important bit of reactor uh, update happens. Uh, and hopefully it will be, uh, it'll be interesting for all of you watching. So thank you very much, and I'll see you whichever video you watch next.